Welcome back for this second episode on sale plans. If you've not already, then check out the previous episode, which covers the kind of rule and how the America's Cups teams are finding a little bit of wriggle room there to um, to play around their sale plans beyond what was maybe initially intended. This episode is going to be looking at the impacts that those choices make. Let's uh, let's jump into it. Before we get into that that balance question which is really interesting let's um let's bring tom in and have a look at or have a bit of discussion about the ranges that these sales are using because that's the most basic application for reducing your area is just controlling the amount of power you've got so let's start there tom do you want to tell us a little bit about the ranges of getting out of these sales and how big the crossovers are etc what what we do know is that if they've got six jibs uh, and they have a racing range between, say, 8 knots and 21, 22 knots. That's quite a lot of jibs over a relatively small wind range. The, the challenge with when they change their jibs is, is actually quite tricky because, because they're unlike a traditional mainsail where you've got uh, slightly limited control. With these twi twin sails, you can, they, can gen they can change the mainsail shape significantly. So if they're a bit underpowered on the jib, they can just run a bit more main, power the main up a bit more, and they've got a lot of flexibility to do that. But there is a downside. If you decide you're gonna deepen your main sail and increase the lift coefficient of your main, you then directly increase your healing force more significantly. So you actually end up not being able to go as quickly because you exceed your writing moment, available writing moment quicker. And that's because the centre of uh, effort is higher typically in a mainsail than it is in a jib, is that correct? Uh, correct, yeah. So yeah, the centre of effort is much higher in the main than it is the jib. And also the main size in relation to the jib is much bigger. So I think the biggest jibs we're seeing are about 80 square metres versus 145 square metre mains. You can see it's, it's kind of a two to two to one ratio. I think, like you say, Tom, you sh if you pull the main sheet on, the place that you gain the power the quickest is right up high. So it's it's the maximum. It's really increasing healing moment. Exactly. So this process of yes, yeah, six jibs sounds sounds crazy. Like why would you need six jibs? But actually, you can see why they're going down this route because the mains are so big. Uh, and it's very easy to run out of available writing moment versus your healing moment. It makes the jib choice actually really critical. You, you won't get massive speed differences between them, but if you get someone on the right jib versus on the wrong jib, and you end up going at a, a knot slower upwind, we've seen that actually the, the boats are all pretty evenly mapped, or, Luna Rossa and Ineos are pretty evenly matched. That that is a that is a difference between being able to stay in front and maybe not. So how would the sail choices manifest themselves? So for people who are watching the America's Cup at home, um, if someone's got a jib on which is too big, how might that look on the water? What would be the consequences for that? Other than just saying they'd be slower, where would they be slower? How would they be slower? So, well, as I've Upwind will be the the main issue. Downwind, actually, we, we've seen today that a bigger jib probably makes it does help. If you're above your crossover range on a bigger jib, you benefit downwind. But upwind, uh, in a in your close hauled course, will be where you see the biggest impact on that. Um, they'll be spilling power out from the main. Um, <laughs> We've seen we've seen on Ineos the a flappy leech. From, they might have to crack the sheet on the jib a bit too much, and when you've got a jib that is kind of a luff length of twenty meters or so, like that, it's difficult to control. Um, Rob, have you got any other thoughts on when you've got a narrow range on the jib? You want to make that decision quite late, and. We've yeah. seen the boat sitting on the coach, sitting tied up to the coach rib quite late and only sailing off the rib with, say, four minutes to go. But 
if you think the conditions are changeable, you don't want to commit to a jib 15 minutes out and then find you're on the wrong jib because yeah, while over the length of a race, you might find yourself, I mean, you're, you're highly likely to find yourself on the wrong jib at certain points in the race. But what you really want to be on is the right jib for the first beat because and we've seen in this final how hard it is to overtake. So course position is pretty important. Yeah. One of the points, the way I see the sales kind of manifesting as well is a bigger jib is a lot slower in the tax as well. The flappiest thing in the tack is is the jib. It's really hard to control them nice, whereas the mainsails there's a lot of control. They're quite rigid. Those um, these twin twin skin mains, uh, but the jib there's no getting around it. It just flaps through the tack, and if you've got a bigger jib, that kind of kills you. And I think we talked last weekend about Ineos's tacking style with the boards down. That's when it was more up range and getting the board trim right is really important. But when you're down down range and you're trying to take a big jib through the eye of the wind, that is, um, you know, it's a lot of power that turns into a lot of drag very quickly in the tacks. And uh, I think in today's racing, light winds, talking about Saturday, we saw Ineos still hurting in the tacks. And that's maybe potentially because they were carrying a bigger jib. Yeah. What about the, what about the sail selection fore and aft how that kind of center of effort fore and aft in the boat because that's that's the other big elephant in the room isn't it about about the whole setup of these boats um who wants to who wants to discuss that a little bit two aspects to this in a way so you you have a kind of a pitch a forward pitching moment okay, if your center of effort is higher there's going to be a greater bow down pitching moment and there's also going to be a greater healing moment but there's also the issue that the position of that centre of pressure, kind of centre of effort, relative to the centre of lateral resistance is quite important in terms of how the helm is going to feel. So when you look at where the foils are on these boats compared to a yacht's keel, they're very far forward. So I can see a benefit to being able to run larger jibs with a smaller main for better helm balance and I, I think that's potentially one of the drivers behind the bat wing and when we saw when we saw um team new zealand training with it they're running say a j three or four with the cat down sail so not necessarily even using it in mega windy conditions so taking um a bat wing main which is a bit of an estimate uh and a j5 jib versus a full main uh and a J5. The, the benefits of the bat wing don't seem to be as great as you would one might think. The, the reason why I think this is that because of the way the sail plan changes, so as Rob's just said, the, by cutting area off the back of your main, effectively your, your proportion of area shifts forward. Uh, in relation to having a full, if you have a full main and say you've got half a meter extra on the back of the sail, if you lose that, naturally your net position of your center of effort will move forward. What what about in the slightly lower range where you you reduce your main area, but instead of running, say conventionally you might run a full main with a J five or a J six even, you run a bat wing sail on the main and you take all of that area back in the jib so you run a you run a higher aspect ratio flatter j3 or 4 so rather rather than just if it were if it were me what i'd be doing is i'd be running progressively flatter sails but i'd be keeping them tall in the jib uh, and uh, then running that with the batwing main i agreed and this is and this is where you start getting into actually we you, we can make some assumptions here, and we can make assumptions of the lift coefficient of the main and and how those forces interact. But until you know those exact numbers and what you can do with your system, uh, that in theory does make sense because you're naturally lowering your centre of effort for the same sail area. So you're going to have same drive force or thrust, but you will reduce your healing moment, which is naturally. The way that you want to do so you, therefore you can go go a bit faster 
Um, uh, it's a really, really complex uh, situation because you've got the foil camp, you've got varying, you've got such control over your main power, you've got six jibs, but the, the equation to resolve that to an optimum is, is really, it's is a really complex <laughs> yeah. piece of work. I think the other thing for me is that lowering the center of effort in the sales isn't just this utopia we sometimes make it out to be. Sure, it reduces the healing moment, but you're then creating a lot of your lift from a smaller kind of span of the sail. And there's only so much work you can really make the air do in such a short area. I mean, there's a reason we have tall masts and that's to reach up higher where the wind's typically moving faster, there's more velocity, there's more energy. And if you're trying to create power down low, then you won't be doing it in as much wind. And also just kind of, if you create power down low and just sheet on harder and harder and harder using the lower part of the sail, um, getting the transition in sail shape from this low, deep, powerful bottom section to the top is really difficult to achieve as well. So it's not the kind of silver bullet you might expect. And if you reduce the center of effort in the sails and create more thrust, that'll be more side force, which needs to be met by greater amount of lift from the foil. So you can do that with more leeway, which might be more drag or more flap, which might be more drag. But if you do flap, then you've got to then separate the lifting from the leeway resistance of the foil with flap differential so it gets hugely complicated and quite difficult to resolve yeah i think that brings us to a wrap i think some of the take-home points for me was just how complex this interplay between jib and main is obviously the main is hugely um kind of malleable you can create a load of different shapes with it the jib less so so maybe there's a side of it you just want more air in your main because you can do more stuff with that area. Um, the flip side though is keeping your centre of effort um, in the sails in the right place, kind of fore and aft relative to your lateral resistance from your foils. And what we've seen with this bat wing get around, first of all, American Magic were using it with a small jib just to depower, get rid of some of the extra drag in the high winds from up high. But Emirates Team New Zealand, we see them using that same bat wing, but with a much larger jib, which suggests for them, it's not just about um, losing kind of a draggy upper part of the sail that you're not using when it's windy. For them, it's also about lowering the centre of effort and bringing the centre of effort forward in mid-range conditions. So, yeah, really inter interesting play there. And we saw them really swap it about with that in the week. So I hope you found these videos informative. I hope it's giving you a bit more of an idea of what to look out for in terms of the sail plans when you see these boats match up on the water. Um, going to be ramping up the content a little bit more now we're heading into the cup. So um, yeah, subscribe if you want to learn more about these, um, these America's Cup boats.